Hi everyone. I am Dr. Shashikant, a professor and a consultant pathologist. Today we are going to discuss uh, on Takasu arteritis, an important clinical lesion that is a close mimicker of the giant cell or temporal arteritis. So before going forward, uh, please uh, uh, put your valuable comment, like the video and subscribe the channel uh, and stay tuned till the end of the video. We have an important case discussion at the end of the presentation. So uh, Takayasu arteritis, also known as pulseless disease, is a very important clinical syndrome that is known as aortic arc syndrome because of the predominant involvement of aorta, the aortic arch and its major branches. It is seen uh, very commonly in women less than 50 uh, year of age. So uh, if it uh, involves, if some cases occur beyond 50 year of age, we will rather than call it as uh, temporal arteritis rather than calling it as, as uh, Takayasu arteritis. So uh, we, by definition, we usually limit uh, the age group to less than 50 year of age. And uh, the vessel involvement is the aorta and the aortic arc vessels, the carotid, subclavian, brachiocephalic, these are most commonly involved. It can also involve pulmonary, renal, and coronary arteries as well. The etiopathogenesis is uh, the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or delayed hypersensitivity reaction that give rise to granulomatous inflammation and the role of uh, CD8 for T cell mediated cytotoxicity have also been uh, defined because the predominant infiltrate that is found is CD8 T cell. Actually, B52 overexpression is uh, seen in many of the patients suffering from Takayasu arteritis. So Takayasu arteritis, uh, pathologically it presents as a thickening of blood vessels, the aorta and branches with narrow lumen that causes significant decrease uh, in the blood flow of the, uh, to the blood vessel. And microscopically, uh, we see granulomatous inflammation of blood vessel wall and a significant medial necrosis. Uh, so significant or it sometimes it could be multiple patchy areas of medial necrosis could be seen and a dense mononuclear infiltrate with the thickening of uh, adventitia and uh, the vasa vesorum, uh, the blood vessels supplying the blood, uh, blood vessels, the smaller blood vessels that are vasa vesorum, that are also infiltrated with mononuclear infiltrates. The clinical feature, uh, there are large uh, number of clinical features that are very commonly seen in Takayasu arteritis that are very specifically seen in Takayasu arteritis. That is absent upper extremity pulse. That's why the name that is being conferred is pulseless disease. Non-specific symptoms like fever, weight loss, night sweats are there. So because of uh, the affection of the blood vessels supplying the upper uh, extremities, so there is a significant blood pressure discrepancy between the extremity. So uh, due to uh, decreased blood supply to the upper extremities, blood pressure will be lower in upper extremities, whereas it will be higher in lower extremities. Common carotid and vertebral uh, invol artery involvement leads to a large number of symptoms like dizziness, syncope, or uh, significant ocular disturbances uh, sometimes can be seen with focal visual defects uh, to retinal hemorrhage and up it can also manifest in total blindness of the patient. Pulmonary artery involvement can lead to uh, pulmonary hypertension and uh, other complications arising of that. Distal aorta involvement uh, commonly give rise to claudication of the legs. Renal artery involvement, uh, this gives rise to systemic uh, hypertension in many of the patients. Coronary uh, osteo narrowing can significantly give rise to angina and myocardial infarction. Aortic arch involvement leads to aortic regurgitation and even congestive cardiac heart failure may be seen in many of the patients. So diagnosis is by angiography. So here you can see uh, the narrowing of subclavian, common carotid and brachiocephalic, all these uh, vessels are being narrowed. Significant narrow, narrowing is seen by the angiogram. And uh, microscopic examination shows medial necrosis, and uh, you can also see uh, multinucleated giant cell, dense 
mononuclear cell infiltrates are seen over here and uh, the coronary uh, blood vessels on uh, autopsy it is showing a significant narrowing of the lumen is being noticed so these are the classical gross feature morphological histological feature and the angiogram features of takayasu arthritis the treatment includes various immunosuppressive drugs corticosteroids angioplasty may be preferred for uh, very short stenotic segments and even stent placement may be uh, placed for may be uh, considered for certain uh, patients so now uh, let's have a case scenario at the end so 45 year middle aged asian woman presents with visual disturbance marked decrease in the blood pressure in low in the upper extremity there is absent radial ulnar and carotid pulses angiography uh, is showing marked narrowing of aortic arc vessels biopsy is revealing granulomatous inflammation with giant cells and the diagnosis that was confirmed confirmed is takayasu arthritis or pulseless disease so uh, before ending the presentation let's summarize our uh, learnings so takayasu arthritis classically is present in uh, women less than 50 year of age group so generally uh, more common in asian women but it has worldwide uh, prevalence and uh, the classical clinical symptoms include uh, decreased blood pressure in the upper extremities and uh, there is visual disturbance uh, systemic hypertension claudication aortic regurgitation congestive cardiac failure myocardial infarction all these features could be seen in patients of takayasu arthritis biopsy feature is more or less same as that of temporal arthritis with granulomatous inflammation with giant cell and uh, angiogram uh, is the diagnostic feature uh, that is uh, diagnostic modality that is showing marked narrowing of aortic arc vessel so that is uh, these are the important findings uh, by which we can easily diagnose takayasu arthritis so thank you all for uh, the patient hearing see you all uh, in the next video very soon